Pro Wrestling Weekly presents Today in Wrestling History, August 10th. On this date in 1996, WCW held its Hog Wild pay-per-view. In the main event, Hollywood Hogan defeated the Giant to win the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. On this date in 1998, WWF Monday Night Raw aired live from Omaha, Nebraska. In the main event, Kane and Mankind defeated the New Age Outlaws, D'Lo Brown and Rocky Maivia, and Steve Austin and The Undertaker in a Four Corners Tag Team match to win the WWF Tag Team Championship. On this date in 2008, TNA held its Hard Justice pay-per-view. In the main event, Samoa Joe defeated Booker T in a Six Sides of Steel weapons match to retain the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Come back, this like has been Today in Wrestling History, August 10. You are listening to Pro Wrestling Weekly with Ferran Derry. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry alongside Lucas the Intern and Nick Cataldi pushing the buttons, turning the dials. A lot of stuff to still get into. We'll go right to Impact, the contract signing, and uh, let's just say it's uh, a little bit of a uh, sour note. We got track five up there, uh, Nick. There we go. We'll, we'll go to Impact. I are ready. You are ready. I okay. Are. My belt looks horrible around you. And by looking at you, I can tell that you're scared of me. Scared, huh? Hey, you know, looks can be really deceiving, can't they? For example, if my memory serves me correctly, earlier this year, you had the whole wrestling world deceived, didn't you? You were walking around this place like you were Mr. Good Guy, Mr. Hero, Mr. I'm going to bear the weight of this company on my back. Well, at the same time, marrying Hulk Hogan's daughter. You fooled everybody, didn't I? Bully, you are so full of crap, your eyes are brown and your breath smells like feces. You know what, Bully? A month ago, if you would have asked any man in that back, can Chris Sabin beat Bully Ray? And you know what? I know everyone back there would have said no. No, he can't. Well, you know what? There was one person who would have said yes, and that person was me. And I did beat you. And at Destination X, did I bring the hammer into the ring? No, you and your thugs did. I just gave you a little taste of your own medicine, that's all. And come Hardcore Justice, when we're inside that cage, it's going to be just me and you. No thugs, no hammer, no nothing, and I will beat you again. Blah, 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 blah. Stop running your mouth. Where's the contract you want to sign? Where is it? Hogan! Where are you, Hogan? Bring the contract out here! Chris Saban's out of his mind. He's going to get crushed in Virginia. <laughs> yeah, all right. Seven yeah. minutes away. Through, oh. Yeah, that's a Hogan, all right. Just not the one I want to see. Here we go. What are you doing out here? Well, Mark, I'm actually here because my dad is out of town, meeting with the board. He's been reviewing this contract, and he's also been reviewing your TNA contract. And he sent me with an email that I'm going to read for everybody, and it's good news. So I read, and I quote, Brother... Because Bully tried to pull this legal stunt after losing the title, plus all of the anarchy he has created with the Aces and Eights, TNA Impact Wrestling is holding Bully to the letter of the law in each and every contract. There was a special clause in the original contract for the Destination X title match that Bully overlooked in regards to his rematch. The world title will be defended in Norfolk, Virginia, inside a sealed cage. If Bully Ray does not win the match, he will never get a world title match again. Well, there you go. What? you got to be kidding me. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's in the contract. Brooke Hogan making it official. That's bogus. This is a load of crap. I am not going to sit here and be bullied by you, by you, but most of all, 
I ain't gonna be bullied by your father. It'll be a cold day in hell before Bully Ray gets bullied by a measly Hogan. You don't have to take that. You're damn right you don't. Mark, 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 Mark. Are you really going to let the whole world find out what I had to find out in our marriage? That you are all talk and very little action. Mm. Well, that was stiff. Yeah. Show some respect, woman. There's a contract. It's official. Sign it. You sign it. Holy Ray putting his signature to the contract. And now Chris Saban. Oh, now it's official, JB. The other guy's got to sign it to the champion. He's going to get destroyed. going to get destroyed at Hardcore Justice. And there you have it. Brooke Hogan with endowment jokes. Now, That's now how far I, TNA now, is now falling. Now I know why the soap operas uh, fell, off a, fell out of favor on television. You got on wrestling, so what do you need it, you know? <laughs> So, well, oh, they, I think they did better was, writing for All My Children or yeah, General was, Hospital or Guiding kinda, Light. Or that was kind of low, I thought. Even Ryan's hope for crying out loud. Oh, my God. That was low. That was painful. And the Facebook sounds feedback like my, agrees. So, sounds like my house. Oh, oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Even what Brooke was saying. Oh, never mind. <laughs> John chiming in on the Facebook feedback. For some reason, I hear the Raw fans chanting boring when I hear TNA promos. Blah, 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 blah could have been the most truthful thing I have ever heard on this promo. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love the instant feedback. He says, when they talk, it all sounds like Charlie Brown to me. <laughs> <laughs> like the parents, yeah. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> a- any adult figure. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, J- John's always good for at least one entertaining. Uh, th- th- yeah, he-, he had a few earlier. I didn't get the chance to check it. When, when uh, Walt was asking about the... Uh, uh, about the creative offices. He said, more like creative or- orifices. Easy for me to say. And uh, he also throws in, uh, we were talking about the filler matches earlier. He says, the filler matches are nowhere near as good as the filler that they put in Twinkies. For those who are enjoying the fact that Twinkies are back. I don't know. I never I never disliked them, but I was right. never a fan of them either. I mean, I, yeah, I, I didn't like run from them. They don't just survive nuclear apocalypses. They can survive bankruptcy as well. That's Were you up all night thinking of that yeah, one? I, I, no, I like that. I like no, that. Yeah. That was off the top of my head, actually. Actually, it always made for good fodder with Archie Bunker. He was a big Twinkie fan, you know. Oh, jeez, oh, oh, yes. Man. Look at that. All right. One, one other. Jeez, uh, oh, man. Oh, jeez, oh, man. It, with the dingbat. All right. Yeah, I don't exactly. I've got some impressions, but uh, Archie's not one of them. <laughs> All right, quick look at the Bound for Glory series standings, and then we'll go back over to WWE for the last little bit here. Uh, in 12th place, bringing up the rear, Joseph Park with negative three points. Yes, he's in negative points thanks to his disqualification loss a little while back. Jay Bradley in 11th place with zero. Kazarian after the uh, double count out this past Thursday on Impact with Chris Daniels. Uh, is at two points in 10th place. Tied for 8th with 7 points, Bobby Roode and Hernandez. Austin Aries, sole possession of 7th with 21 points. AJ Styles, a point higher with 22 in 6th place. In 5th place with 23 points, Christopher Daniels. Tied for 3rd with 24 points. Very close disparity there between 2nd and 7th place. Jeff Hardy and Mr. Anderson in 2nd place with 26 points. Samoa Joe, and with not quite as comfortable a lead... At 39 points, Magnus, after losing 10 thanks to the disqualification loss, courtesy of a run-in by Bobby Roode, trying to get himself back in the mix. Now he's only down 32 points. Interesting. All right, now back over to Raw. We've been talking so much Cena and Daniel Bryan. The hype, I've I've been leaving WWE to do the hype for CM Punk and Brock Lesnar because they've been doing it so well. And they, of course, had another brawl this past Monday on Raw. And afterward... Interviewer Renee Young caught up with the beast, Brock Lesnar, as well as Paul Heyman and Curtis Axel. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me at this time, Brock Lesnar, Curtis Axel, and Paul Heyman. I just wanted to get your comments on what just transpired out in the ring there between your two clients and your former best friend, CM Punk. That's the best of the best of the best of the best of the best that this world has to offer I'm the beast 
and the best in the world. Paul, say something stupid. Say something really stupid. I want you to take that microphone and I want you to deliver a message to C M Punk. I want you to tell CM Punk that he may not make it to SummerSlam because next week right here on Raw I'm going to walk out to that ring and based on the beating CM Punk just suffered from Brock Lesnar I am confident enough to tell you that I am not going out to the ring as an advocate I'm going to stand in the ring and I'm going to look for a one-on-one -on -one man versus man fight because next week on Raw, if he's man enough to accept it, it will be CM Punk versus Paul Heyman. How about that? Paul Heyman and CM Punk this Monday on Raw, the go-home show to SummerSlam, which, of course, is a week from tomorrow. He is going to get his butt handed to him. I hope CM Punk wipes the floor with him. Just rips the should... tail right off. Should be. Uh, I was going to say, that's about all that's left at this point. Over the course of the 90s, it's whittled down from, from a, a mullet to a skullet. At this but point, as much as I really like, I really don't. I like CM Punk, and then I don't like him for things that he's done. Two thousand nine, Jeff Hardy. Um, but as much as I don't like him that much, I really have to respect him. He truly is the best in the world at this point. Certainly can't go wrong with that. A couple of quick uh, bits of news and notes: Stephanie McMahon selling over two thirds of her WWE stock. Not exactly sell Mortimer herself from trading places, but WWE executive Stephanie McMahon Levesque sold 114,972 shares of WWE stock on the open market this past Monday. Sold for an average price of $10.39. So just by selling the stock, she made herself a cool almost $1.2 million. But she still has a little over 51,000 shares of stock, but it's about 31% of what she was uh, selling before, so, or what she had sold uh, prior to that. Interesting stock stuff, I know. But it's interesting that two-thirds of... She, you know, she's like the vice president of the company. Why is she selling two-thirds of her stock? So who knows? Who knows where they're going with that? Also, Kane, he's starring in a WWE movie sequel. WWE Studios producing a sequel to See No Evil, starring Kane as Jacob Goodnight, according to Variety.com. Production on See No Evil 2 will start in the fall with Jen and Sylvia Saska er, serving as directors. I'm wondering how they're going to work him back into the movie. Like, is he going to come in with, like, an eye patch? It's like, I'm looking for that dog, okay? Uh, no idea. Standing. All right, that's, that's going to do it for us. Stay tuned. Nick Cataldi and the Kiwani Circus is up next. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly on WBCB, Levittown, Fairless Hills, Trenton. Fourteen ninety WBCB, Levittown, Fairless Hills, Trenton.